si nombreux sujets que nous avons rejoints. Croyez-vous bien. I suppose I will have to uh, accommodate for the fact that perhaps not all of my subjects are well versed in the French, and so I shall speak in my native tongue. Uh, although it will behoove you well to study the French, for it is a bit of a universal language these days. But regardless, I am most fluent in the Scots as well as the French, and so I shall speak in that tongue. We are a very international court here in this land of the Scots. It may be a kingdom small in size, but one of great heart and friendliness to oh, all most, corners of the world. Most certainly, and certainly my own ancestors, of course, hailed not just from Scotland itself, but there are many, but uh, my mother, of course, came from France, Marie de Guise, and my grandparents and great-grandparents from England, mm -hmm. and Flanders land, and indeed you yourself named Fleming after that land. Yes, my good father, Lord Mal Fleming III of that title, his family first came to Scotland in the 10th century, and their name Fleming comes from Flanders land, to say that that is their origin. But they've been good and loyal to the family, to the Stuart Royal Court in Scotland since that time, indeed, even fought alongside Robert the Bruce himself. Indeed so, that is quite true, but at the moment there is great rejoicing in Scotland itself since just two months ago my young son James was born and everyone is most relieved that we have not only an heir but a male one at that. And now you're in fine fettle, you can get back to your sporting activity. Thankfully at last indeed, uh, to begin with of course, um, it is uh, quite traditional for ladies who have just given birth to stay in confinement a good long while. Sometimes up to 40 days, a full quarantaine, if you can believe it. So I am quite keen to get back, but sadly the weather has been so dreadful. So far it has been impossible to go out. I'm sure you have noticed how fierce it was. Ah, it's more than just a smur, your grace, out there. It should be said, my lords and ladies of the audience, that we are well used to such wild weather when we left this kingdom Indeed. from Dumbarton Castle. Well, all that talk of permission, he had permission from me, which I think 
is the most important part. We do well, not we sing. Scots in the land of the Scots after all. Most certainly indeed. And truly, if Elizabeth was honest, she would admit that I have just as much of a claim to the throne of England as she does. Perhaps even a, even a, a better yeah. one. Perhaps we shouldn't start too much of a confliction with your cousin. No, indeed not, it is true. And so I have avoided mentioning that in the correspondence. But I must say she has been most generous in the gifts that she has sent for my young son. Oh, true. As many people have been. It a has golden been font encrusted with pearls and jewels from which the wee prince should be baptised. Although that is still in progress. The bad weather along with all the diplomatic issues mm. have meant that we have had to delay the baptism. But we're planning on something quite fantastical. Although it will be by the end of the year, it will be in Stirling Castle. And I'm sure many people will go to It is only right, for there is where you were crowned, your right. great and your father before you, King James V. In truth. It is a safe and strong fortress, but that would be pleasurable too, with that mm. fine palace that your father built, your good mother. Ah, uh, indeed. I have fond memories of it from, uh, from my childhood. But my lady Barbara has sent note to ask your grace, have you truly met your cousin Elizabeth? Alas, I wish it were so, and uh, the both of us have been trying again and again to so arrange something. Indeed, but they always end up being cancelled one way or another, generally because my cousin is a little too wary. But I do write letters to her on a regular basis, and though we are in some ways rivals politically, I like to think that we are also, uh, also friends in a matter. There's certainly great kinship between us. I would not say I gossiped, dear Grace, but I was having a small conversation with the English ambassador, and he intimated to me that perhaps part of the delay on your cousin's side was that she was somewhat feared of your charismatic nature that she should be Come too charmed should she meet you face to face. Well, perhaps she would. I certainly most hope that we could be good friends. For I think we would be much better allies than we would be rivals. And I hear late news brought by uh, Stuart and Rosemary, envoys from afar, to say that they are ancestors of Mary Beaton, who sadly oh. is not here today. I am sorry. It is a great shame that she is not present. I'm sure she would love to have a little chat with you. For I'm she sorry to say, she had a delivery of a new book and she does love her reading. Aye, she does love her reading indeed. And it is most uh, pleasant, for I love to have her read out to me as I go to sleep. It is a, a most excellent way, but um, as Stuart and Rose may have commented indeed, uh, you might have noticed, I have many Marys surrounding me. There is, of course, Mary Fennings I mentioned, and Mary Beaton. And we cannot forget. Mary Livingston, who is so often referred to as Lusty Livingston for her vivacious nature. She is very vivacious indeed and loves a good party and indeed she has a, a little bit of a, a great deal to do with the organisation of the great and lavish feast we shall be having for my son's baptism. She does love to dance. And we most certainly should give credit to Seton also, Mary Seton, who has done her hair most beautifully this day. Indeed all the visiting ambassadors do comment on how Exquisite for skills to make our hair so finely dressed. I did notice as well that one of the ambassadors, the English one, Cockmotten, he did seem to have a bit of an eye on her, did he not? I think it does look upon Mary Seaton with a warm and glowing affection, but I think he is looking in vain for love there. Indeed, she does not seem like the marrying type, I must say, and uh, she seems more interested in my company that. Uh, for all the rest of us might be perhaps swept away off our feet by some fine saucy lads. I think she is too loyal to you, dear Grace. Well, it is good to have learned subjects, and certainly the Setons have been so for the royals I for do not many, many generations. I need to distress, dear Grace, mm -hmm. but I have also been asked by another visitor to the court, Alistair. He wishes to know how you cope with the death of poor Irene Seal. <sighs> well, it is a sad fact indeed. And indeed. I must say, to begin with, I did not cope with it well at all, and I was most enraged, certainly with my husband, all the 
plots and the, the rumors that were put together simply by lords that did not like me as a queen in order to defame my good name were quite difficult. And so what I did was very simply I looked after my safety. And I came here, and this is in fact where I delivered we James, just quite nearby indeed in Edinburgh Castle, but... Uh, Sad to say, my good and gentle folk out there, for I know you all have strong and loyal hearts, but there are those at court who have jealousy that festers within them and that would wish to strike any blow against her grace and are too envious perhaps of some of the favourites here. Such as but the way that I remember, that I cope with his death, the way that I have grieved is simply by making lovely music. For indeed he was so fond of singing and playing the lute, which is something that I dabble in myself, though I, I must say I'm perhaps not quite as talented, not having enough time with all my royal uh, responsibilities, I suppose. Perhaps, Your Grace, you find it easier to deal with these most tragic circumstances, to think on kinder and happier times. Yes. My Lady Anne does wish to know if you remember your stay at Inchmahol. I was very little when I stayed at Inchmahol Priory, and those were very tough time indeed, although I do have very fond memories of Sir David Lindsay who brought me there. He was always so kind and so fun and he always made sure to play with me and cheer me up when I was little. It must have been some of an adventure to leave Stirling Castle indeed. and under such threat for the English were so close and there was a real chance you might be taken and forced to make a marriage alliance with their new Edward. Although it might have worked out, who can see? But those I am not so certain about that, and certainly Edward himself died quite young, so... This is true. Well, no matter. I do They lost too many princesses. But, um, there is a lady, Sue, who has asked about your little gems and pearls. Oh, Where indeed. they might have come from. Oh, I'm very fond of them, and most of them, or many of them, I should say, come as inheritances from my family. My mother was very fond of collecting such beautiful jewels, as, quite honestly, was my father, James V. He had quite the taste, certainly especially for uh, pearls, which are very, very fashionable. Golden pearls especially are loved here in Scotland, for you can find many freshwater pearls in the River Forth, for instance. Mm -hmm. And many other waterways of Scotland. In fact, it was one of the very ancient folks who said himself, of all the pearls in the world, so. Others might have an argument for that, but I just think they are very valuable. Well, we Not can just the slight that. sheen of pink or mm -hmm. purple. Absolutely, and as yes. you can no doubt see, Lady Fleming is wearing some very fine examples upon her ears as well. But in truth, a pearl is love for its luster, for it shines and glows more sense when it's mm -hmm. more close to the skin. Indeed, absolutely. And many have fakes, but I do not indulge in But I have heard your cousin Elizabeth, who so many of these fine pearls, they festoon her garments, that she has even had to have farms built for the production of these gems. Well, to be quite honest, I am surprised that my father didn't need something along those lines. One of his gowns, uh, which was made specifically for him at great cost, contained no less than 49,000 of those pearls. I dread to think for the poor folk who had to stitch on each one. But such is a life when you work in a royal court. But my lady Alison also wishes to ask, when you visit Alton Palace, how often do you play the tennis there? Oh, I am very fond of tennis indeed. Though I am, of course, quite indulgent in other sports. But as you can see, I always have one close by, just in case the weather is good enough for a, a little game. Uh, but Alton Palace will break the day of race. Oh, certainly not here. It's quite different from France in that way, but uh, Falkland Palace is particularly fine as the first ever um, tennis court that was purpose built in Scotland was built there by my father as a in the French version, indeed. And so, as you can see, I am quite the sportswoman, and as I said, I quite favour the tennis, but I'm also very fond of. Uh, I think perhaps she's maybe heard some of those shocking rumours that in order to play more effectively that you wore the breeks of a man and went about in short tails rather well, than the illustrious fine fashion you're wearing today. I certainly have been known 
going to indulge in a little bit of that, and certainly for occasions like April Fool's Day and such things. Well, well, one, indeed, <laughs> one Easter, we did, uh, which fell upon the 1st of April, we did dress up as boys, and that was most fun. And uh, quite honestly, I think it is most fine, after all. Uh, it is merely a matter of practicality. I see no shame in it. Truthfully, it can be quite cumbersome in these great gowns to gad about so easily, whether you be at the courts of tennis, play catch pool, or many other sports beside. But my lady Catriona also wishes to have your good guidance on perhaps any other great female leaders you look up to. Well, one of the leaders who is most beloved, of course, especially of my mother, though she was not a queen, is Joan of Arc herself who is a great figure, of course, most beloved by many people in France and also in Scotland. In fact, so how, how is it that you call her here? I'm afraid to say that although the French is fairly prevalent at the court here in Scotland, not always so easy for those of the Scots leads to speak or pronounce it so well. So Jeanne d'Arc has become Jeannie d'Arc here in the uh, land of Scotland. But Jeannie d'Arc is most beloved, of course, oh, and okay. many other strong queens that you might find about, especially within the Bible. I have a special fondness for Queen Esther, who is most brave, I think, and many other biblical figures too. But uh, aye, there are many to be inspired by, even though certain people, like John Knox, might say that a woman is not fit for ruling. Sometimes I feel that a woman is more fit for ruling than men. It is not such an easy life for a woman to hold of the place of position or power. And it was not so easy when we were at the French court, although I was mostly at the convent of Corsi with the other ladies. But uh, for yourself, Your Grace, between Caterina de' Medici and mm -hmm. Diane de Poitiers. Indeed, a very strong, fact. very strong women and strong willed also at the French court. And they inspired me greatly, and I learned from them also by watching. And um, my Lord John would wish to know of Your Grace how your good husband. My Lord and Stuart, or as he is sometimes called by many, Lord Darnley, feels about the reasons behind the murder of Red Seal. Well, you would have to ask him, of course. I do not know that uh, it is uh, so evident he is how he feels. After all, he is somewhat responsible for it. I hear that he is feeling most sorry about it, but. Uh, we shall see of that. I suppose we all make mistakes, Your Grace. Perhaps are led astray by those we think are friends and good and loyal advisors who perhaps put some poison into our ears. Perhaps something like this happened with your husband, that he was nearly blinded by such envious folk at court who wished to drive Indeed. yourself. I think I think perhaps that is it, but I must say, though my husband is most uh, beloved in some ways, he is also um, more easily misguided by folk who tell him what he would like to hear. And in fact, though he rails against it, he is, uh, he is not so suited, I think, for the crown, which is why he does not. Perhaps a little impetuous. Touch. Just a little. But then again, so am I. I would be hard pressed to blame him for it. Well, I think my lady Carrie is most interested in our fine fashion. And I have lately had a rally from the French court for your tailor, your grace, a new fauteuil. Oh, Just how the lovely. latest style from Paris. Very nice indeed. Is she not exactly like me with that red hair? I think there is quite the likeness there, mm -hmm. your grace. This is quite often the way that fashions are shared between kingdoms, for it is more practical rather than a, a drawing that is sent to have a miniature made. These little pockets or poutines are entirely accurate in every way so that tailors might espy exactly how they are constructed. Every stitch, every seam, every fastening that they might replicate it in full. So perhaps this should be your outfit. I believe I shall have, indeed, I, I believe I shall have my tailor make a very beautiful silk velvet gown such as that. I do like that her bodice looks almost like a man's doublet as is the latest fashion in Italy and France. Uh, but of course the material that you can see is made quite differently 
beautiful. We are wearing some beautiful brocade silks, mostly from Italy and France as well, whereas she is wearing silk velvet. And those are the most beloved materials. Black is a particularly stylish colour. It's very costly. Mm -hmm. And it is classically known, it has been for quite some time, that whenever we do masking in European courts, the colours usually chosen are black and white. So black is always most most favourite. But it's a costly one as well. Very difficult to obtain a true black in fabric without great cost to go with it. There may be those down in the town of Edinburgh or elsewhere who wear finest garments as they can afford, but I think you will find their shades of black are not quite to the same hue. No, I do not. Not quite a true black, I would say. But indeed, when these silks come in from many distant lands, they are sometimes known by their place of origin, such as well, fine taffeta from Genoa in northern Italy, as you might know it, being called Jenny taffeta here in Scotland. Again, the Italian, a little difficult to pronounce. Indeed, indeed, it is quite true, and um, there are many other examples, of course, but as I said, fine brocades from Italy are uh, much, much better. Mm. We often call this style a brocade, but if it is made not with different threads woven into a pattern, but just the manner of weaving creates a pattern that is referred to as damask. Mm -hmm. It was said so because it was foreseen in Damascus, in Syria, and that is how it gets its name. Very far away lands that we get our textiles from. So let us not forget the good products of Scotland, which are Indeed. sent far and wide too. We produce very fine wool here, of course. Though it is often sent abroad to be finished. Mm -hmm. Tapestry weaving, particularly, there are many fine examples, uh, especially at Stirling, of course. My lady Anna wishes to interrupt to ask why, with all the finery and elegance of the French court, you chose to return here to this land of Scots instead of staying in France until you married again. I know indeed that many plans are already being made whilst indeed. we were quitting through the morning well, of poor King Francois. Quite sadly, of course, once Francois died, there are many reasons for my return. The main one, of course, was that my good mother, uh, Marie de Guise, uh, is, of course, died just shortly after the death of Francois himself. And so, I did not have a trusted regent here in Scotland who could look after the affairs of state. At that point, I was also 19 years old, so grown enough that I was not expected to take another agent. To say nothing of the fact that my mother-in-law, Catherine de Medici, was a little jealous, if I dare say so, of how successful I was at court when she herself struggled so much to be accepted as the queen, being from a family that was more to do with banking than with old nobility. It's a little awkward sometimes. Yes. My lady Anna is from the very distant new land of Brazil. My oh, goodness, Anna. Anna. The new world. It is most extraordinary to see that we have so many people coming from so many different parts of the world. I do hope that Lady Anna can send us some good finery to uh, mm. see. Maybe some exotic Brazil would. Mm. We often use that to colour our cosmetics. And yes. even for those of us who are not so naturally scarlet haired mm. ourselves, it is a hair dye too. Mm -hmm. Now, my lady Cynthia does wish to know of your grace and um, what your relationship is with your half sister Elizabeth. Perhaps she means your cousin. I think Elizabeth. she must mean Elizabeth I of England, I would assume so. I'm afraid we are not half sister. You must be confusing me with Elizabeth's half sister, Mary Tudor who was the daughter of Catherine of Aragon and my Families are complicated. Indeed, and my great uncle, of course, Henry VIII. And so she is also called Mary, as are many people, as we have mentioned before. Uh, my ladies in waiting are called Mary, and my mother was called Mary, which is essentially Mary as well. But as for my relationship with Elizabeth I, I mentioned this a little earlier, but I do try to maintain as friendly a position as possible. Of course, there is a great rivalry to be had, and my cousin is most um, 
perhaps wary is the best way of putting it. She is uh, not so fond of anything that might take her power or outshine her. But it is true, Your Grace, that she had a most trying childhood yes. herself. No wonder she is somewhat cautious in these concerns. When her sister, Mary Tudor, came to the throne, she was imprisoned in the tower quite briefly. And it's maybe for that very reason that she is so sure to make herself known that she has the right to be Queen of England, and that this then leads into some of the conflict about... But as I said, I try to, in my correspondence, be always friendly, for I think we would be better as friends than as rivals, as I think it would be quite amusing to prove all of those folk wrong who say that women should not be in charge of countries. I think, for all that you are different in many ways, you and your good cousin Elizabeth, Queen of England, are very similar in others. Yes, I do believe that might be. I do not know if the other lords and ladies might agree, but having these two fine ladies being queens of neighbouring countries, perhaps, if you ever do get to meet one another, you could sort out all these terrible troubles we have with each other. But um, there are a number of folk who wish to ask about how you feel about the Earl of Bothwell. And I am sorry to say that the Book of Faces have become somewhat obscured of late. So, yes. Certainly, William and Hillary wish to know about your opinion of yes. James Hepburn. Well, he seems loyal to me, which is quite appreciated always. Oh. And he seems to have a great deal of influence. He is one of the few Catholic lords left with power Indeed. in Scotland, so that yes. must be taken into account. Of course. He is a man built well, solidly, and sure, ready based, and some would say very fine. Mm -hmm. and he is perhaps a wee bit overly known with some of the ladies. Oh, Mary, of course, but uh, that, of course, is expected of gentlemen. Uh, well, well, ladies who must, of course, always remain virtuous. He is also a sea captain and admiral yes. of the Navy in Scotland. Indeed, yeah. sailors always have that reputation, do they not? But still, he seems fine enough, uh, although I am a little... He was overly keen sure. to put himself forward yes. as respect of bridegroom. When yes. we were mourning Francis, he came over to France to put himself as perhaps an option. Although, of course, he was merely a subject when some of the other gentlemen were posing their prospect for princes. How mm -hmm. now? So, you know, he did have two wives already. It is complicated. He says he only had one, but others say he had two. It is a most complex matter, I think, mm -hmm. and one that I will not look too far into it, for for now I am already married, and so have no intention to do so again, especially with this gentleman. And I have to say that Marie Valeria has asked whether, should you become embroiled with this Bothwell, that in a conflict if you had to surrender, do you think it would be because of your own choice, or because of him, perhaps? Would, would you have to consider his position? Well, most certainly I would imagine that if I were so desperate as to turn to him for help, I would certainly be quite desperate enough not to surrender, so it would have to be his fault, of course. The Queen does not surrender. I have heard his father was troublesome too to your own good mother. Mm -hmm. So he was. For after your father died, I have heard tell that he made quite a fool of himself along with <clears throat> Matthew Stewart, the Earl of Lennox, your own good husband's father. They both married to the hand of your mother, Matthew Fifties. And my lady, uh, oh, forgive me, my lord, Kenny asks if you have any fond memories. Of course, I have many fond memories, for when I left for France, I was already grown enough, but I have plenty of memories of being little and it running about. Though, it is so you did have time. such time with your mother. It is true, for indeed, usually royal children get sent away and are raised in other places, but with all the, uh, well, the problems that Henry VIII was causing when I was young, we and prefer to have me sent away. To call no offence to our good neighbour south of the border, but if you wish to woo a woman and to make her bride to yourself or to your family and kin, I would suggest invading her country with a large army, maybe not the most romantic overture. 
Indeed not. So we had to be separated eventually. For indeed, uh, well, a great, a great danger lay upon my staying in Scotland. You must forgive us. Uh, the sounds are that. very loud. The sounds are very excitable. We are quite keen on the young prince, and so are laughing away all day long. But no matter, as I said, I am very, uh, I have many, very many, very many memories of my mother. And she even managed to come to France. Indeed. <laughs> uh, was just indeed. two years after we had arrived there, she came across, and of course, mistake not just for you, but your own half brother. The, indeed. We young Duke. As well. It was most fine to uh, to see her, of course, although it was rather mad by that attempt to have me murdered by poison, you see. Someone poisoned my favourite dish, which is uh, pear fritters, of course, being Scottish, I do love a bit of deep fried food. They are delightful, but has it turned your taste for them? I have never had the same taste for them since this incident happened. I have to say, though, I do enjoy the feasts and banquets you give your grace with all the exquisite sugar work made into miniature castles and little sailing ships and real firing cannons. Indeed, too. I am a very talented cooks. And I must admit, I am always partial to when we stay at Stirling, for the strawberries there are divine. I believe it was your grandfather that did many in the garden. Indeed, he planted a beautiful number of gardens there. It is uh, always pleasant to walk about them and to go uh, hunt in the King's Park as well, of course, just below. Well, he was well known for his love of activity, mm -hmm. his playing of many sports. And my Lord William does wish to ask, are you really the First Lady of Gaul? Oh, the gout, as we say here in the land of I would say I am not the First Lady to have gout. Most certainly not, although, of course, men will not speak of it, for they believe that it is a masculine activity, and so I have been criticised by many detractors about uh, playing the gelf. But oh, yes. uh, have a clique here. Your indeed, I like to keep on about, just like I like. Me too. Absolutely, and as you can see, just for I have you, I have had fine, fine things made for the playing of the gelf, and certainly it is an activity I enjoy a great deal, and that I have played all over the country, from St Andrews, which of course is very well known all the way to Muscle Burnings, and having a house in Leith, I'm sure I will find some time to go there and play at some point as well. And so all those ancient, ancient golf courses, there have been many ladies playing upon them, as well as gentlemen, it's from the very start of the sport in Scotland. I think you'll find, my Lord William, that many of us at the court who do like to spend company with the Queen, well, that means to be in company with her on the links as well. Mm -hmm. There is a rumour that uh, this is how Mary Heaton wants to find jewels off you, your grace. Well, she may have won once or twice, yes, it is quite possible, but well, I must say it is always most pleasant. And of course, when I was away in France, I always had the, the military cadets were the ones carrying all my equipment. And so some say that it is where the, the term of caddy has come from. Well, indeed, when I came back to Scotland, I was most surprised that there was nobody to carry things about for me. And so I asked where my caddie was, or cadet, in French. I think you'll find, though, it is not just at the Royal Court. Everyone else in Scotland loves the fair game over oh, much. Geez. It is why, in truth, it has been repeatedly banned as a sport since 1457. Mm -hmm. But it has never stopped, neither your own good ancestors, especially King James IV, uh, but also many others too, especially down here in the town of Edinburgh, where leaf links are very fine and most practical place for anyone of the town to go to take their pleasure. Not just the men of the town, but the ladies too. I'm sure at some point in the near future, the town council will likely have to stipulate that their law extends beyond the word any man. Yes, indeed. That indeed. Fact. But perhaps there are other questions we might ask. Oh, of course, indeed. Um, it has been asked um, if there's anything you would like to change in your life or do differently, Your Grace. I believe that is my Lord Ian. Well, there are many things, of course, and many of them I would not be able to change myself if I had any choice. I would have preferred to stay in France with my beloved Francois and the Queen of both France and Scotland. Would be most fine. But as for 
things that I might uh, have control over, certainly perhaps I would, dare I say, pick a different husband. It is not always easy, though, for all the choice we seemingly had in the very one from Prince of Conde to uh, Don Carlos, the son of the King of Spain, Philip II, and he was perhaps a little intemperate in his behaviour. I understand he was most cruel to animals. Oh, was. indeed. Not somebody I wish to be associated with, shall I say. For all that he was a little younger and perhaps would have been a good political match, being a Catholic as well, but mm -hmm. ah, it was never Such easy. Is and you know what they say, you can take all the men you like to choose, but you'll often repent at your leisure. Mm -hmm. It is difficult to know the character of a man before you spend much time with him, and of course, that is not always possible. And In remember, fact, uh, my good mother herself did not meet the king, James V, more than once before she sailed to Scotland to marry Then only briefly, whilst he was in France looking to marry a completely different lady, Princess mm -hmm. Madeleine. So, mm -hmm. aye, but such is a way with royal marriages. Sometimes it is all done by contract, sometimes it is done a great distance, sometimes you do not get to meet, and even if you should, well, you must be left with always on the best behaviour and would not know the true nature until perhaps much later. This is why I perhaps might consider an older gentleman myself, someone I have spent Oh, the is there someone you have your eye on, Mary? Well, my uh, Lord William Nathan Lethington, your secretary, he is very particular to me. And mm -hmm. we shall know. see what can be done, but I see that my lady soon oh. asks uh, that all my ladies are from Mary and you. How we avoid confusion? There are a great number of us, for not only is there myself, Mary Fleming, and Mary Seaton, and Mary Beaton, and Mary Livingston, though some of us are yet now married. So and some, some of our servants, are... many of the servants are also oh, called yes. Mary, for it is a very popular mm -hmm. name. But uh, I find the best way, if there are more than one Mary in the room, I will generally call them by their last name. So generally I would say Fleming or Seaton along those lines. But it is rare that all of them are at court at the same time, for they have their own affairs, their own estates, their own marriages to attend to. And so not all of them are present at the same time. Though as we said earlier, Seaton does tend to be at my side most of the time. She does not seem to have much time for um, gentlemen. No, well, Mary Livingston, she is really now married to John Semple. Mm -hmm. um, but, of course, we do not sacrifice our names I still call her Mary Livingstone. And in fact, it is true that uh, generally when a woman marries in Scotland, if her rank is higher than her husband, she will keep her name. But I do not mean to cause any stirrings of nerves, Your Grace. I know we do take caution for the supernatural, especially since we were at the court of your late mother in law, Catherine de Medici, and Monster Adams. I have had a message from the Phantom. That sounds most mysterious. Perhaps through the use of scrying, this Phantom asks, if you had become Queen of Scotland and England, would you have then pursued again the French crime? Well, I would not have taken it by force, if that is what you suggest. Most certainly not. I still have many relatives in France, and most of them are quite important at court. And so I have no doubt that had I become queen of both England and Scotland, then no doubt any child of mine would have been married to whoever might be king or dauphin of, or indeed queen of France. But unfortunately, the rules in France are a little different and they do not allow a woman to rule. Mm -hmm. um, she may marry and be a consort to the king of France, she may be regent ah, if the new monarch is her child and is too young to rule himself, but it is unlike in the lands of Scotland and England where, well, we do allow it. Mm, indeed. But my lady Catherine has sent a message that she wishes to know what kind of songs that you like to sing and favourite pastimes. Well, I have many pastimes, of course, as we mentioned, many sports. I'm quite the outdoors queen, and uh, no doubt many of you will have noticed 
that many places across Scotland do claim to have had me stay there. Some remark that it is almost too many of those places, but it is very traditional for a monarch to go about the country. And so I travel a great deal, and I go hunting a great deal also. Um, but some of my more quiet pastimes include embroidery, for indeed I do enjoy it uh, quite, a, quite a lot. I'm sorry to say that some of the Scottish lords of the Parliament do mourn and gripe about it, Your Grace, that when you sit in to <sighs> council, that you should also be multitasking and doing your embroidery as well. Well, I must say it helps me understand better what they are saying rather than less. But as for singing, I am very fond of song. And I must say that is one thing I inherited from my mother, thankfully, rather than my father, who had a bit of a reputation as a, a little bit of a croaky voice, shall I say. Well, he loved to play James, particularly at Pash, Easter Tide, where he would sing loud, but in the most harsh and rockish tone. He did it on purpose, he thought it was some music, but I, he was said not to have his fine singing voice. But we are the most fortunate, of course, that we have songs sung in Latin and in French and in Scots and then in Italian and Spanish. I'm quite I'm partial sure. to um, the dream of the daughter of the king of oh, yes. uh, It's I a Spanish song. This one, yes. I do remember it, although I do not remember the title of it. It's, um, it, it doesn't translate so well, I think, but then we also do love the Scots singing. Indeed so, indeed so. I must say that uh, there are many songs I think Scots is particularly suited to a nice, lively tune, but perhaps one that is also, in its topic, rather grim. I'm particularly fond of the ballad The Twa Corbys. Mm. There Very is a fun. version in England too, but I find boring. the Scots one much, much more lively and entertaining. They lament the lady her love lost to battle goes on and finds another mate. Mm -hmm. What are ladies to do if their love has gone off to battle and left them? Are they supposed to just be put away? Like I some they weapon are. of war, no use? Mm -hmm. I think that was impractical. But Indeed. I must say, Your Grace, we have a wondrous uh, attendant mm -hmm. by the name of Mortimer mm -hmm. who's asked how you would characterise your style of governance. Well, I would like to think that my style of governance, although some people might disagree, is actually to be quite diplomatic and intolerant. Although, well, if I may make a contrast with my cousin to the south, one of the complaints that are made about her is that she is most indecisive. She will make many plans and decide upon something and go off and decide that it will be done. And then just a few days before the thing is to happen, she will cancel it out of fear or out of disinterest. I think that is not a criticism that can be made of me. I think perhaps people might say I am rather the opposite, that I am quite impulsive, but I find it very important to be decisive in my decisions, as well as being open to negotiations. For instance, when you first came back exactly. from France, the, the great concern in the kingdom, which had become so Protestant that a Catholic monarch was returning, was that you would foist your religion upon them. That was not the case, was it, Your Grace? Well, indeed not. I made quite certain that uh, all would be heard. And in fact, though I could have legally cancelled the uh, edict making Protestantism the state religion, I rather did the opposite and accepted it, simply saying I would not take it for my own, but I accepted that it was the will of the people. For truly, Your Grace, to be a king or a queen mm -hmm. of the Scots does mean of the Scots, and must therefore mean you listen to your people. Yes. But, since we are late to time, or I do like to gossip, mm -hmm. so, Your Grace, we still have one last note from an envoy known as Briar Moss, and she, I think, wishes to pass her, her loser. Mm -hmm. Uh, well next to ourselves, but also wishes to know your favourite dessert. Now, as I said, it used to be that I was very fond of pear fritters, for they are most delightful. But that whole affair with the poisoning attempt that was made upon me simply put me off of them. Mm. But there are many desserts, of course, that can be had, and at this time of year, certainly many wondrous tarts, plum tarts I am very fond of, for instance, in 
Rambo was on Most Delightful oh. at this time of year also. Um, but one of my favorites actually is one that was most favored by um, my mo my ex mother in law, my late mother in law, Caterina de Medici. Sabayon, as we call it in French. Sabayon, I think, in Italian. Indeed. It is a custard mm -hmm. of sorts, but very fine. Made with delicious. a sweet wine. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Absolutely. It does go quite well with strawberries. Indeed. But um, I believe that. This audience will come to a close. In truth, things to do. my lords and ladies, it has been a great pleasure to pass on your questions and queries to Your Grace the Queen, and we would like to thank you for your good time. But Your Grace, I think we must bid them adieu. Adieu, and merci beaucoup pour toutes vos questions. Merci. Very well.